In this video, we're going to take a look at use substitution for a Calculus 2 class. Some of you will do this in Calculus 1 or just your Calculus classes. Whenever you're doing integrals, this way of doing integrals is absolutely essential for you to take complicated functions and make them easy enough to integrate using the integration power rule. That's today on High Peak Education. Thank you everyone for watching. So I like to think of u substitution as going backwards from the chain rule for derivatives. And you'll see why, because you wanna set something that's in a radical or in a parentheses equal to u. And it doesn't necessarily have to be the letter u, but that's often how it's taught. So we're gonna get into today's video. We're gonna look at three different problems and I'm gonna explain how these things work right now. It says evaluate the indefinite integral you see for the constant of integration. We wanna evaluate this. Now, by the way, a lot of times in calculus, the symbols a and b usually refer to what uh just either constants well probably constants right they're probably constants so even though it's not very clearly written here let's just assume a is a constant and then b is a constant okay these are just very common letters that are used for constants so let's assume those are constants okay so we want to evaluate this integral now, first of all, we can't evaluate this using traditional polynomial methods. Because first of all, like we have a square root, we have a fraction, and that sort of thing. So in some sense, tell me what you know about the concept of u substitution. Because I think u substitution might be the way to go for this one. So how are we going to do u substitution? 30 minutes before my professor had to sign off, but from what I know, we're... we're setting something equal to u and then we have to solve for uh what dx is or what du is right yeah essentially that's correct and then remember what i did yesterday remember i said u was that 3x plus one do you remember that and that's because i established a new function of my choosing now here's the idea in the same way we're going to establish a new function that is a function of x of our choosing for convenience but and here's probably the better way to think about it. U substitution is like going backwards from the chain rule of derivatives. In other words, let me just do a little aside here. So if you recall, you know, if you have y equals, let's say, 3x squared plus 1 to the fifth power, you know what y prime looks like, right? You know, you, you do the derivative of the outside by the chain rule, like so, keep the inside, and you multiply by the derivative of the inside, right? That looks familiar? The point is, this is an important point, U substitution is like going backwards and figuring out, listen to me, what is this 3x squared plus 1? In other words, what's that parentheses that sort of keeps carrying around? So in other words, I mean, it should hopefully be clear to you that if I integrate, that is take the antiderivative of five times three x squared plus one raised to the fourth times six x, it should hopefully be clear to you that you're just gonna get exactly this function. But notice that's because we would say, let u equal 3x squared plus 1. Because that's the sort of lump, if you will. I like to think about just like a lump that keeps carrying around. That's in the parentheses. So just like you were saying, we do need to express du, which is the differential of this new function. That's because we need to also express the dx. Because as soon as you start to integrate this, or take an antiderivative, you need the dx here. And then notice the dx is gonna be six x dx. Now look at this. Do you see that this right here is exactly this right there? So we can directly replace. So what we can do is we can instead say this antiderivative is, don't forget about the five. We can put the five on the outside, by the way. Hopefully you're aware of that, right? Constants can always go out front of integrals, no sweat. 
then it's u to the fourth du. But wait a minute, I know how to integrate that. That's pretty easy, right? You just go one power higher, multiply by the reciprocal of that new power, which is five, out front. So this is u to the fifth, and then five over five, plus a constant. But wait a minute, five over five is just one. We know what u to the fifth is. That's just this three x squared plus one raised to the fifth. And then you may ask, what about the plus c? Well, in this case, c equals zero. Otherwise, we could have like, I don't know, plus seven, and then c would be seven. Now, by the way, you can't find that seven by antiderivative unless you're given additional information. So just no need to worry about that. But is that clear that like u is like the thing in parentheses? That's, that's a key idea. Now let's have a look over here. The thing in parentheses kind of looks like this 9ax plus bx to the ninth. Do you see that? Because the parentheses that sort of surrounds it, if you will, is the square root. Is that clear enough? So now keep in mind, especially since you're new, not every choice of you to get started is a perfect first guess. If you get it wrong at first, no sweat. I mean, you're just learning. But let's give it a try, right? So we're going to say let u equal 9ax plus bx to the ninth. Okay? So we want to express du. Now remember, du is it's like taking the derivative, but you're actually taking what's called the differential. Just think of taking each side of this equation, u equals whatever, and shrinking it down to infinitesimal size. So that's why you'll basically take the derivative here, but you'll also write a dx. Okay. So what's the derivative of 9ax plus bx to the ninth? 9a plus, plus uh, 9 to the, yeah. 9bx to the eighth. Do you see that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And don't forget, this is all multiplied by dx, right? Yeah. Okay. So we're good so far. Now, here's an important insight. That doesn't look exactly like the numerator. But if we're clever, again, this is where math requires a little bit of cleverness, like in the sense of we should be able to get it if we play around with our algebra. What happens if I factor out a 9 from both of these terms? What do I get remaining inside? Yeah, I do, right? Don't you get a plus bx to the 8th dx? And now I start to jump for joy because now I got something I can work with because a plus bx to the 8th, that's this piece. The u is here, and that's going to go in right here underneath the square root. And then finally, the dx, that is right there. Now, one more thing. Do you also notice that we have a straggler? We have a stowaway on board. That's this 9. Do you see that? Yeah. So does it make sense to you that it might be useful to divide it to the other side? That way the pieces that we're replacing are very direct. So we could say 1 over 9, because this is just an equation by the way. 1 over 9 du is a plus bx to the 8th in parentheses times dx. And then now all that becomes the numerator and we're just going to put 1 over 9 out front of this integral okay. because we can say this is now integral 1 over 9 and then remember this whole numerator a plus b x to the 8 dx all just becomes du as long as we have the 1 9th there which is out front mm -hmm. and then we just have u to the one to the square root now by the way the square root is actually what power as a fractional power one half that's right one half and look at that <laughs> that's a heck of a lot easier to have taken um, antiderivative of right 
So we've got 1 over 9, and I derivative of u to the minus 1 half du, which I think I can we can handle that one. Okay? Mm -hmm. So let's give it a try. What are we going to get when we take that antiderivative? I have u to the negative 3 halves. Well, close. That would be if we took the derivative. So we're going to go uh, the other way. To the 1 half. To the 1 half, yes. For the du part, it's just the exact same thing. If you, right? Well, so here's the deal. The du basically goes away. Because remember, okay. think of du as the width of your rectangles. That comes along for the ride, but as soon as you perform the integration step, it's gone. Okay. So it's sort of gone. And then... So it would just be u to the 1 half plus c. You're close, so we still need the 1 ninth out front. Oh, yeah. But then, remember, the rule with integrals is you go 1 power higher, but then you multiply by the reciprocal of the new power in front, which would be 2 over 1. Okay. Right? And then plus c. Now let's finally finish this and clean this up. So first of all, what is 1 over 9 times 2 over 1? 2 ninths, yep. And then u is actually something in terms of x. Because, I mean, we want to express the final answer in terms of our native variables. So what's going to be u? So dx of 9. Yep, 9ax plus bx raised to the ninth. And then we got to go plus c, because we can't forget that. But I think that should be our answer. For when we're doing the integral part, for when we got down to the u to the one half, so we do the reciprocal of the exponent multiplied. Right. Out front. So okay. so it's just the it's just the inverse direction of derivatives. Remember, derivatives you go power multiplies coefficient in front, then you go one less the power. We got to go the exact opposite order. We go okay. one power higher on the exponent, but then multiply by the reciprocal of that new power out front. Okay. So that's how we modify not only the exponents, but the coefficients. Okay. Is that clear? Yeah, that's clear. Okay, good. So what we saw in this video is how you can choose the u for u substitution. That is, you want to have the quantity that's in parentheses or under a square root or radical to be the block that is the function you choose for u. Remember, you do need to evaluate for dx. You need to get the differential each time that you are getting one of these integrals. And that means you're getting a proper differential. So hopefully that makes sense. The whole idea is that your first choice of u will not always work, but you always want something to be something like one power less if it's a polynomial. You want it to be the derivative of the thing that's u, and then you can sort of use the chain rule in reverse. So thank you very much for your attention. I hope this was helpful, and let us know down in the comments what other kinds of videos related to this that you would like. And thank you for watching High Peak Education. Please smash that like button if you enjoy this content. Please subscribe to the channel to grow the channel. Please share these out with your social networks. Thank you very much for interacting with us, and I will see you in the next video.